Hey, what's going on? I'm Apprentice Sampson and I help health conscious consumers get rid of, eradicate, destroy, or right, maybe not destroy, but get rid of toxic products in their life so they can achieve true wellness. In today's video, we're gonna do a review on Icelandic glacial water, all right? We're gonna see how good it stacks up against competition over here and ultimately see if this is good for our health. Now, if you have not, or even if you have watched these videos before and you're loving them, or if you're brand new here, what you wanna do is smash that subscribe button. The reason why is because you'll get more tips, tricks, and tactics on how to improve your overall wellness. Now, let's go ahead and pour us some Icelandic water. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna test this for three specific properties. The first one is alkalinity. Actually, the first one's not alkalinity. The first one is antioxidants. The second one is gonna be on alkalinity. And the third is what I like to call superior hydration. And we want to see, not really if the water tastes good, we wanna see if it's good for our health, okay? And that plays a vital role because our body is 75% water. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in that first one, which is antioxidants. Antioxidants are important because of the free radicals that are all around in the air. You're like, what? Free radicals? They're free and they're out there trying to capture the electrons that are in your healthy cells, okay? So they come in and they are in the air that we breathe, they're in electronics, they're in um, a lot of the sick foods and tobaccos and things that we consume. And they come in and they're taking the electrons from our healthy cells. When that happens, the cells have a tough time breathing and excreting waste and taking in nutrients. They become oxidized. And on top of that, they become inflamed. They get like a little large, they get nasty, okay? And it will start to duplicate amongst all the other cells around it and it'll start to create this big, huge problem. And now health concerns and your sickness and disease all thrives from those two things, oxidation and inflammation. Everything related to sickness involved with man is in that contagious two-part series of oxidation and inflammation, all right? So we need the antioxidants because they are going to actually come in, take care of those cells by giving them the extra electrons that they need so they can reduce that oxidation, bring down that inflammation, and essentially be the fountain of youth, all right? So <laughs> without being said, uh, how do we test that? How do we check for that in our waters? We're gonna use what I call an ORP meter, which stands for oxidative reduction potential or the potential to reduce oxidation. You see, things that are oxidizing, they're positively charged, okay? And antioxidants are negatively charged. So if we see a positive number in here when we put this wand in the water, that means it is oxidizing us. That means it is creating dis-ease in the body and it's ultimately creating that oxidation and inflammation that we just don't want. However, if we see a negative number, that means it's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and it's anti-aging. It's gonna keep you looking young and youthful. So let's see what we get here with the Icelandic water. I don't know if that's how they talk in Iceland, I doubt it, but. <laughs> All right, so it's oxidizing, it's going up. This at 170, probably by the time you take a glance at it, yeah, it's still going up. 170, so this is oxidizing us. This is making us worse. And yeah, that's all I gotta say about that one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other water that we have here, which I'm gonna call electric water, all right? And the reason why is because we just took water that was good and we just shocked it. We just put electricity through it. And this one is showing a negative. It's showing a negative 745 and it's rising. I mean, it's going down actually. And the reason why is because once again, we shocked it. And so when we shocked this water, we broke off little pieces of hydrogen from the H2O that's in the water. And that hydrogen is the strongest antioxidant known to man. So that's why this water is an extremely strong, extremely strong antioxidant. I can't even get the words out. And that's going to help you with that oxidation, that inflammation, which is really any type of vitus you're going through. Ultimately though, that Icelandic glacial water is actually doing us more harm than good. So with the first test out of the way, we see that Icelandic glacial water is oxidizing us. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second thing, which is on alkalinity. All right, on for that second test, which is on alkalinity. And the reason why this is important is for one, the bottled water industry like blew this thing up, right? They 
said, yo, alkaline water. Um, we're going to put alkaline on everything. And the reason is because of Dr. Uh, Warburg. He discovered that cancer and sickness cannot survive in an alkaline environment. So, bottled water companies started typing or started putting alkaline and pH and all these things on the bottled waters as a way to sell to us. And so this has become an $18 billion industry and it's rising. And that's how we kind of know about pH as far as water goes, right? This is what has us all searching around for alkaline water, all right? But you don't need to worry about that. It's actually a byproduct of what's in the water. Okay, it's actually a byproduct of what's in the water. And the reason why I say that is because your blood is gonna say a 7.365, whether you want it to or not, because that's where it's supposed to be. Now, how it does that, that part determines, is all determined by you, okay? Now, we can assume things are alkaline, or acidic acidic or alkaline now we're consuming things over here that are acidic I'm talking about your tobaccos your cigarettes your alcohol your junk food like those kinds of things remember our blood is gonna stay there it's just gonna have to grab the nutrients and electrolytes and minerals from us okay so in order to battle back that acidity and actually keep our blood good it's gonna end up taking it from our skin so that's how we get eczema, that's how our skin breaks out, start peeling, cracking, and even bleeding. It's gonna start taking it from our bones, our joints, and our ligaments. So it's gonna make it tough for us to get up in the day. We aren't gonna be able to run around with the kids as much. We aren't gonna be able to throw the football around because it's gonna end up hurting our shoulders and our joints. And this is how osteoporosis happens. If we continue to consume those acidic things, it's gonna start taking it from our brain. This is how our brain gets all foggy. This is how Alzheimer's happens. So we want to consume things that are more alkaline because it makes it easier for us to battle back with that with that constant battle of the oxidation that's coming in and the city that we do consume, all right? So how are we gonna check that out? We're gonna test it using these pH drops. Now, if we see a red or orange or yellow, that means this is acidic and it's actually eating the minerals and electrolytes that's in our body. However, if we see blue, purple or dark purple, that means it is alkaline and it's gonna actually keep our body in balance and allow us to actually consume some of those not so great foods, all right? So let's see what we get here. Woo, all right. So it looks like we got some blue from Icelandic, which makes sense because they put on their bottle 8.4. And then we have over here some beautiful purple, which is looking like between a 9 and a 10, all right? Now, here they talk about their water and how it's natural spring water from Iceland and that they sourced it at 8.4. Here's the problem with that. <laughs> the moment the water comes into contact with air, we already saw the air was oxidizing, right? It's going to start to neutralize and bring the water back to a normal neutral level, which is that green you saw on the chart. So, I feel like there's something in this water. I feel like there may be something in this water too, but let's test it, right? The whole reason for the pH is so when we have that acidity that comes in, the alkalinity that's in the water can balance it out. And it'll actually stop it from taking over. So let's go ahead and put my stink breath in this water and see what we get. Aha, uh -huh. you're faking it. <laughs> so there's something in this water that allowed it to be 8.4 originally, and then after it battled a little bit of acidity, not a lot, <laughs> then it immediately turned yellow. So let's see what happens with this water over here. doesn't change. Why? Because we're not adding anything to the water. We aren't adding anything to make it appear alkaline. It's naturally alkaline from the hydrogen that's in there that we talked about earlier. When we shocked it, it naturally has hydrogen in there. So because of that, it's going to stay looking this color. <laughs> okay. So on the second test of alkalinity, this played 8.4, right? Until we actually gave it a test. And then we discovered that it's not really as alkaline as we thought. It's not going to be able to actually battle back 
the acidity that's in our body. It's actually gonna create more of it. Let's go ahead and check out that third and final test on superior hydration. Alrighty, on to that third and final test, which I like to call superior hydration. Now, I just want you to close your eyes for a moment and just imagine a chain link fence. All right. Now let's say we grab a beach ball, completely full, and we hurl it at that chain link fence. What's gonna happen? It's gonna come back to us, right? Now, let's say we took a marble, like a small little marble, and threw it at that same chain link fence. It's gonna go right through it, right? That's exactly how our water should be. Our water should be so small that it can actually pass through our cells to actually push out the waste, allow us to bring in the nutrients so our cells can start thriving, okay? And so we're gonna test that theory and we're gonna use th this tea bag to represent our cells, all right? So here we have us, dehydrated, tired, <laughs> wanting to get some water in us, right? And as you know, once we get water in the tea bag, it makes tea, right? Yeah, so let's go ahead and make some tea with this Icelandic glacial water. All right, and it's not making tea. Like, it's this, the water should be hydrating the bag, right? I mean, it's around the bag, right? So just like when we drink water, we drink a lot of water and just sits right here. It doesn't actually go in. Like, why isn't it like going through our cells and like going through those walls of our stomach so we can start getting hydrated, right? So with this tea, the reason why is because the water is too big. And so when we, when we make tea, for those of you who still <laughs> drink it, like the old fashioned way, you boil the water, right? When you boil the water, it makes the water molecule so small that it can pass through the tea bag and make tea. That's why we boil the water. That's the only reason why. <laughs> I mean, unless you want it hot. But let's go ahead and try it with this water, see what we get. That's what you want. When it comes to hydration, this is what you want. You want to, you want to drink your water and actually not feel thirsty anymore. To turn off those receptors in your in your tongue that's telling you, hey, I'm, I'm still thirsty. I'm still, I still need water, right? And so you can see this is barely doing, it's barely hydrating us. And so this requires us to grab more water. And yet we can't because we're full from the water we just drank. Now, let me do this one more time. Just to show that's not like a, a trick or anything. Or maybe it'll actually change this time. Let's see. Nope. So this Icelandic water is, uh, it's not hydrating us the way we want. So we paid all this money, had it come all this way, and it's not hydrating us. So you know what, let's just do a little bit of water. Let's just do a little bit. And let's just say that we're cooking, right? And you want to use ingredients, you're right? You want to put in the salt, the pepper, the paprika, all those other things, right? <laughs> you want to just use a little bit, because if you do use just a little bit, then it's gonna be just as powerful uh, if you use the full amount. Just think about if you were taking any supplements or medications, you'll want this to actually get into your bloodstream. How much of it is actually getting absorbed into your body versus getting thrown, getting excreted down the drain when you go to the bathroom? Just think about that. All right, so we finished our test on Icelandic glacial water, and we tested it for three things, right? The first one was on antioxidants, and we saw that the water is oxidizing all the way from Iceland is <laughs> oxidizing us. Now on top of that, we looked at the second thing, which is alkalinity. And while it says 8.4, and while we saw 8.4, when we actually tested it, it wasn't doing 8.4. It was doing 4.4 <laughs> or maybe five, something like that, all right? Last but not least, we tested it for superior hydration. We saw that it really doesn't hydrate us. And in fact, it takes more water to do the same job as a cup of this electric water. So let's think about this. If we change our water, we can change our world. Our body is 75% water. You deserve the best for your health. So if you are serious, reach out to me. I am available on my website, lapartasampson.com, and I am also available on Facebook. 
just look down in the description below and you can find a link where you can connect with me to see videos that are too hot for YouTube and to connect with me personally. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care.